Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text was read to you a moment ago of our Lord Jesus Christ interacting with a Canaanite woman. I've entitled this sermon, Begging for Grace, Expecting Grace, Getting Grace. Who does this woman think she is talking to Jesus in this way? Quite frankly, even talking to Jesus, period, would have been a very odd thing indeed. She's arrogant. She's pushy. She's uppity. But she knows exactly whom she is talking to. She's talking to the son of David. She's talking to the Messiah. She's talking to the Savior. You see, this woman has two very important things going on in her life. She has wisdom and she has faith. And when the two work together, well, things happen. Our Lord is there in the midst of that. It's a powerful combination. She does know who she's talking to. And she's aware of the grace that this man has to offer. Jesus, in fact, will never run out of grace, of good, of kindness, of love, of forgiveness. She knows the promises of God and she is bold to go to God and ask. Go to Jesus and say, I know what the Old Testament says. I know what the scriptures say. I know who you are, Jesus. You are the man that brings grace, forgiveness, and the things that are good from God. She's not asking for too much from God. No more, no less than the promises he himself has made. Are you so bold to go to Jesus for the promises that God has made through him? Or are you asking for other things from Jesus? It's always very hard for me as a pastor when I'm trying to help people through struggles in life and they get mad at God, which I'm okay with getting mad at God. That doesn't bother me at all. Uh, feel free, if you're mad at God, voice it. He knows what's in your heart, I promise you. But they get, when people get mad at God because they did not get what they demand from God, which God has never promised to give them. It's a hard thing to unwind for people. Uh, rarely, and I mean rarely, uh, do we ever have people that are going to God who get mad at God for promises that God promised that they did not receive. I know I'm kind of talking in a circle here. I'll put it to you like this. Maybe this will help. In the, in the, in the Bible, uh, in the book of the Bible, the book that was left out, 1 William chapter 11, it didn't make the Bible. It says God promises you will win the lottery one day. But we left that book out for some reason. I don't know. You see, my point here is if you're going to Christ for grace, for love, forgiveness, for eternal life, for those things that he won on the cross for you, he's abundant in it. And he's happy to give it. These are the gifts that the Bible describes over and over again. The gifts that Jesus abundantly gives. Maybe he gives so much that we get a little too blasé faire with the whole thing. In the United States, last year, we threw away 119 billion tons of food. If that number is not big enough for you, how about this one? We threw away $408 billion worth of food in the United States. Or if those are too much for you, I'll make the number smaller. 40% of all food in the United States will be thrown away. God does provide for our bodies, does he not? He does provide for the world, does he not? And much more, so much so that we have gotten to the point of throwing away 40% of what God has provided for us. And so when God says he provides, he provides. So when he says he provides salvation, he sends his only son. That's the level of, of his promises being kept fulfilling, fulfilled. We look to the cross and our hearts break 
and rejoice at the same time. There we see our Savior dying, and there we see grace pouring out. There we see our Lord's death, and there we see our salvation being won. We see the cross, and we say that is too much. But thanks be to God, it's what he gave us. Jesus will never run out of grace or love or forgiveness. And it's a forever thing, by the way. So when he makes us part of his family, and he has... This time together is an eternal time. So back to our text. Will Jesus not overfeed the children of Israel? Will not Jesus give so much that the crumbs from his table will fall to the ground so that the whole world will be fed by his grace now? Will Jesus be stingy with his grace? Or will Jesus really be the light unto the whole world? Jesus is not the problem in our text today. The gifts that Jesus gives is not the problem in our text today. Salvation being enough is the problem for us in our text today. Our relationship with Jesus can be held back a little bit here. The love of God needs to be and is enough. The word, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus is enough. That gift is enough. And yes, for that woman, it was exactly what she was looking for. God's grace, God's love, God's compassion. She knows Jesus is God, and she definitely knows those promises. Just like you and I. She's not an arrogant woman. She's a servant of Jesus. She's on her knees begging, knowing that her Savior will listen and give more than she could ever imagine. It's a true story-ish, what I'm going to tell you. Even historians are not quite sure how well it is or isn't. Uh, it's one of these things. Uh, but there's a man uh, in part of um, would be modern-day India-ish. Um, and he owned a farm. And one day, and he did well, good life. And then one day someone said to him, you know, there's diamonds to be found in the world. So he sold the farm and went to Africa and looked for diamonds all of his life. And he spent every cent that his, his farm made for him. And then after he um, uh, had lost it all, he actually committed suicide. But the funny thing is, the guy who bought the farm for him had a few camels and was drinking in the creek, as camels tend to do, and there was a shiny little rock, a diamond. He had gone all over the world and he sold the property for what was actually his right there. And this mining area, uh, and I'm gonna pronounce it, I'm sure it's gonna be wrong, uh, Glodonia Mines, to this day, in this region, 100 million carats worth of diamonds have come out of that part of the world. One diamond, in fact, sold for $39 million. Send out a beautiful diamond, enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seeked all over the world for things, and yet God had provided him for so much. He looked so foolish. We Christians will go all over the world looking for all sorts of interesting things to provide for our needs. And yet right here, right now, you have all that is needful and good. Things that will bring you real godly joy. You live in the light of Christ. You have no more want in a lot of ways. We're not arrogant. We just know our God. We know our Jesus. We know in our text today that all she was saying was, give me grace, give me care, give me compassion. Save my daughter. Save us. This story would have only been shocking if Jesus would have looked at her and said, no, thank you, leave me alone. That would have been a shocking story. Not the way he treated her, not the way she talked to him, not the outcome of the story. That feels right to us, and it is. Jesus did not rebuke this woman. He just reminded her that who he is, 
son of David. And she reminded him, there's more grace than your, fa- your table can hold. And he was happy to give it. Here we are, just like that woman. Hands open, on our knees, begging for grace. So who are Christians? Who are you and I? We go to Jesus. And when the world tells us it is so useless to go to Jesus, grow up Christians, that's when we go all the more. And we ask for things like forgiveness and help for our loved ones and people in need who truly need Christ's care and forgiveness and salvation and love. We go to him for those things. We were lost and been found by the work of the Holy Spirit. We look to the cross and we see our salvation. We don't expect grace. We know it's coming because our Lord says so. We receive that grace in our baptism. We receive it at the Lord's Supper. We receive it when we hear the word of God. We receive it when the saints come together, both living and dead as it were. The reality is, if Jesus promised you the lottery, it's just too small. It's just not a big enough gift for our Lord to give you. The lottery? How about eternal salvation with him? How about a life where you don't even have pockets in the robes that you own? How about a God that knows you so intimately, he knows the hairs on your head? A God that has fed you so much that 40% of the food that you buy, you're going to throw away. A God that's grace is so large, we don't even put a number on it. May the precious grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the promises that he has given us, begging for grace, expecting grace, and getting grace to the work of our Lord Jesus Christ be in your heart. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.